Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you all in. I'm a little bit late to the party. I had some issues with multi-streaming and streaming in general, so it got delayed uh, me finishing Echoes of Wisdom. Main reason for this video is the fact that it's essentially a follow-up to this video. Not only that, but once again, it is together with the Xenoblade my favorite video game series ever. And just because I was dissatisfied with Tears of the Kingdom doesn't mean the game took my imaginary wife and kids from me, making my life miserable and whatever else that some other fans are saying online. Or saying that they are so done with Nintendo and whatnot. Bueno, cool. <laughs> I'm sure that Nintendo is crying and shaking right now. I think it's interesting how, as always on the internet, there is two extreme opposites clashing online. I was sharing my opinions rather respectfully, I'd argue, and yet I should throw myself off a bridge and something for, you know, critiquing Tears of the Kingdom. And to me, being a fake fan. Gotta love those um, video game communities, right? In any case, I originally wanted to release a video that would follow up this one first, but after finishing Echoes of Wisdom, I thought absolutely not. <laughs> I have to talk about this game first. And here I am. I was a bit unsure how this game would turn out, especially regarding the last game. But man, oh, I'm glad I was proven wrong. Okay, let's dive into it. Before I start to talk about anything, this is a very important topic for me, which also kind of strives some points I made once again in this video. The gameplay absolutely not working and people telling that they would have preferred to simply play as Link the whole game. And to this, I have one simple answer. At least they are trying to do something different, experimenting. Things that are different gameplay wise. I'm tired of the internet, man. Uh, Pre-Echoes of Wisdom, you hear people crying about a Zelda game where you actually play a Zelda. It becomes a reality and people complain again. What were you expecting? Zelda swinging a sword and shield? I mean, what's the point of playing as Zelda just for the sake of playing as her? I love the approach here. You technically play as a mage in this game, which is perfect for Zelda. Sure, maybe Link-style gameplay would have been more fun, but honestly, I respect the try to do something different, offer a new style of gameplay and give me a different experience that I never had before, but oh well. Uh, let's start from the beginning. The world of Hyrule. There is a lot to unpack here. So first up, this game oozes Ocarina of Time. You can see it everywhere. Deku scrubs. And other things I can't talk about here, it's still the world you kinda know and love. Not saying that things are identical to A Link to the Past and A Link Between Worlds, mostly considering how absolutely more massive the open world is, it also feels different to traverse it. It comes off as weird at the start, but there are, in a way, no boundaries. Even though that's kinda what we are used to in previous 2D Zeldas. Sometimes it feels like walking out of bounds at places you aren't really supposed to be. And sometimes the developers actively wanted that, because there are areas that can't be reached otherwise. And it rewards you for that. There are also quite a few secrets that you can find. May there be a random boulder in a pond that you can lift, or a broken wall on the mountain, or a suspicious looking plant that you can cut. The game also looks visually even better than Link's Awakening remake, and it is really cute. Like ultra cute. There are also dungeons back, yes, actual key using, theme fitting, puzzles including, with multiple floors kinda dungeons. The wildest part? Those aren't the only ones you can find. The story relevant ones. There are even smaller, optional, I guess you could call them mini dungeons spread across the overworld, where you also have to face a mini boss at the end. This is cool! And you can't cheese everything with just one single echo, you actually have to sometimes think about it. Same about the puzzles. Of course, not as complex as some previous Zelda dungeons, but I unironically had a few moments where I wasn't sure what to do, and I think that's a massive step up from all the shrines and dungeons from Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, where those just felt like checking those, you know, checkboxes in a way, and being absolutely zero challenged. 
I guess I can also put it in this segment uh, that the bosses and mini bosses are also pretty cool. But don't get me started on the final boss. And ironically, without even any recency bias or anything like that, one of the coolest boss fights we ever had in the entire series, I kid you not. It straight up rivals one of the best 3D boss fights we had in this series. It really does feel like they took some inspiration from Tears of the Kingdom, which also had a superb finale, and just cranked it up. What an experience. Also, the enemy variety is once again good. This game has a ton of different enemies. <laughs> And I guess we can also slowly switch to the combat. Uh, as mentioned before, you're essentially playing as a mage. And it's not like you can just spam whatever echoes and win. It reminds me of Elden Ring a bit. If you fight a Deku nut with armor, arrows just bounce off. Enemies with a spear or sword won't do much, but since it's slow, you can just use a whiz rope a bit further away, beat the strong Deku Nut, then face an enemy with a shield. Deku Nuts can't do anything against the shield, the same with the whiz rope. What can you do? Use a Lazal Foes that jumps behind him, and you using Bind to hold your enemy's shield. Or a small rock enemy that doesn't care about elements. Blow it up! Flying enemies? Use a crow! Flying enemies that use wind to blow your crows away use a mothula with jets to use a very effective body slam. Granted, later in the game you do receive some absolutely busted echoes, but even then, I switch between some of them depending on the situation. And you should always keep in mind that bind is a powerful tool on fighting enemies. Even I have forgotten that fact sometimes, and it is especially relevant for bosses. Sure, you could just summon a monster and do nothing, eventually you will beat the boss, but if you make use of every little gimmick they implemented, it makes the fight so much more fun. I think they did a great job. I do have some criticism, but I'll mention them at the end as always. You also have accessories that you can equip. And honestly, I like them. Same as the outfits, which are only equipable as their entire set, giving you also some nice bonuses sometimes. Uh, don't think I can say more to that. Let's also touch upon the music real quick. I loved the music in this game. There are actually a handful of songs I really have in my good songs playlist. The best part! If you activate the Swords ability you saw in the trailers, the music gets remixed into an 8-bit version, no matter where you play even during the final battle, which is really cool. I did notice a trend for the recent Zelda games. Not saying much, but if you play them, you know. The characters and story. This kinda goes hand in hand, so I'll combine them. There are finally some actually well-written characters and story here. With some real development too. Nothing crazy, but man, the fact that it feels so genuine here. It doesn't feel forcefully happy or funny or emotional, where you think, okay man, just <laughs> continue please. I felt genuinely invested and cared enough about the various nations in Hyrule. Characters were actually funny, made me actually sad, and made me feel good. This story made me feel good. Everything about it feels just so wholesome. Those stories feel wholesome. <laughs> I think this encapsulates the entire story of Echoes of Wisdom pretty well. These stories feel wholesome. And there is also, once again, these slightly more mature topics being told in a more subliminal way. Something that I have missed in the newest Zelda games. And dude, Deku's crops returning? <laughs> I don't believe it. And they are some of the cutest beings ever. Being also quite hilarious and overly emotional over everything. There are also some absolutely unexpected twists I would have never seen coming. At a certain point, the story goes in one hell of a different direction. And from the looks of it, most of us weren't expecting those. I mentioned in the Tears of the Kingdom critique video how Nintendo handled the marketing for this game. In Breath of the Wild, the massive focus was the open world. This is what we expected, the story being only relevant in the last trailer it received. So we expected a higher focus on the open world exploration, and even if the story was toned down, we enjoyed it. We were prepared for it. Tears of the Kingdom went right into the dark, heavy story for every trailer, and we received a game about Hentlefery. 
and Link being an absolute menace, killing Koroks and building tanks. While the story straight up made no sense, feeling like a hard reboot with a very mediocre plot, introducing things with zero explanation. Then there is Echoes of Wisdom. The first trailer says that there are mysterious rifts created by Ganon and you having to fix it. That's it. They then started showing off Tears of the Kingdom-like gameplay that triggered some of our alarms. And the main reason why probably quite a few people now refuse to buy this game. In general, the expectations were mixed. I talked to a colleague about it, uh, a casual, hasn't even heard that the new one was coming out, was suddenly ultra excited and asked, this soon? I told him it's a new 2D Zelda game after 9 years, and all I heard was an Oh, people still play 2D games? Uh, some colleagues know of the fact that I'm doing YouTube, some of them watching my videos. So yes, if you are watching this video, my guy, I'm calling you out here, you are unironically missing out. And yes, if you start the game, that's what it feels like. Until you face the first big twist in the game. Ooh, would you believe me if I told you that a cute 2D Zelda game, which was released after Tears of the Kingdom, after all these interviews where Aonuma essentially said how little he cares about the story, wanting to create a game without any story at all, and everything fell kinda apart in the lore community? And I dare you, I double dare you to say that all of that doesn't matter. Some of the most clicked videos on YouTube regarding Zelda an absolute cornerstone of the The Legend of Zelda media piece on the internet, whatever you can call it, is the lore and story of the series. And things have never been this silent before online regarding Zelda lore. And this game? Dropped some of the wildest lore that we have ever received, even bigger than some of the lore that Skyward Sword dropped. And you know what? I bet you that this is in response to the backlash from Tears of the Kingdom. If you think this is nonsense, think about it. Backlash and Wind Waker, which was undeserved in my opinion. But what did they do? They went with a more realistic and edgy art style for Twilight Princess. They were talking about motion controls being the future for Zelda and it turning out to be the most linear game which people hated. Well, Breath of the Wild was released. The polar opposite of what Skyward Sword is. And what we have received here? Man, it feels like things are about to improve. Yes, Grezzo made this game, but they work hand in hand with the Zelda team. It was the same with Age of Calamity. So I'm really having a sliver of hope here. I wasn't kidding when I said that the game oozes Ocarina of Time. And it was a very cool blend of the old Zelda with the new Zelda. This game shows that it works, while also respecting the old lore and stories. You can have more open gameplay, giving you the choice of playing the game in your way, yet having a compelling and interesting linear story and good lore. After finishing the game, I went to look at other creators. Funny to see how many uh, that started with Breath of the Wild just didn't care whatsoever, as I match uh, the real fake fans. But those of us who played these games for many years, look at those reactions, man. We're getting a cutscene here? Lore? Oh, we are getting so much lore, bro. This is this is cool, man. This game rules, bro. I'm over here, like I'm just like I'm I'm over here. I'm all, I'm just like, how's it what now? How's it how about how about how's it what? What was that? What did you? What did you just say? Awesome. <laughs> That's just awesome for one. <laughs> that that is hardcore. We're really cooking here. This is already mind blowing. Damn right, this is hardcore. That was fire. <laughs> I'm telling you, if you were holding off playing this game, please give it a try. It is so worth the experience, especially for older fans. I had a fantastic time with this game, except when I didn't. Uh, that was a joke. I, I, I'm actually shocked to say that. I don't have many negatives about this game. It feels like a link between worlds in a way, where this game kind of feels perfect for what it is. E even though no game is truly perfect. 
But let me be honest, the frame rate in the overworld sucked. Yes. But at least I'm not pretending as if 30 frames is unplayable. I play games at 120 FPS on my PC, and if I go down to 60 frames, I need to get used to those 60 first because it feels not nearly as smooth as 120, almost clunky. People saying that they don't care probably only have a Switch in the first place. And if you simply didn't really notice them in Echoes of Wisdom, good for you, genuinely. But I most certainly did. The problem with Echoes of Wisdom is that you, it jumps around between 30 and 60 frames all the time in the overworld. But it's not really an issue of the Switch not being able to keep up. It's more of an optimization issue. Digital Foundry has as always made a perfect video explaining why that could be the case. It can become irritating when exploring Hyrule, but once again, saying it's unplayable is nonsense. The Echo Select menu is utter garbage, <laughs> straight up pulled from Tears of the Kingdom. If you're a patient person like me, it is manageable. If you have anger issues, well, you may get pissed off a few more times than me. The smoothies are kinda pointless, not gonna lie, I, I barely use them. When it comes to healing, you have a bed. And it's not like the game is that hard, you absolutely don't need them. Only exception being the final boss, but even then, fairies exist too. Also, the AI of the Echoes can be so dumb, it is sometimes infuriating how incompetent those creatures are. Next, same issue as Tears of the Kingdom, the rewards are lackluster. A bit better, but you still get rupees and apples and stuff like that a bit too often. Also collectibles that have no use whatsoever. Zelda needs some better re rewards for certain quests and exploration. And I think... that's it. No, please forgive me, I I'll talk about spoilers in a moment. If you want to leave, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a real good one. Dude, dude, what kind of a lore drop is that? Everything that we have experienced, the entire world and universe was just created to contain Null in a prison? The creation of everything now has a reason? A backstory? We talk to the three goddesses directly? And what in the name of Kirby Endgame Eldritch Abomination bosses that thing? And why is the music just absolute peak? What does that mean? Null was the biggest, most powerful villain we have ever encountered? The origin of evil or something? And the cracks that appeared in early Hyrule where all the demons emerged? Was that caused by Null? Is Demise born out of Null? Dude, the final boss fight kicked ass! Point and blank, Link was crazy, evading, attacking and everything. The team up against him was so badass. Noel started to spam echoes towards the end, those switch ups and gameplay too. I, I, I was tearing up at the end there, also with Try leaving us. Man, <laughs> what a great game. And those twists. Uh, my reactions on the watch channel, by the way. G Ganon being just an echo and no crashing in, Link being sealed away? Dude, oh, the Triforce is back? I don't believe it. The lore accurately splitting up and everything, it, it is so nice and cool and... Man, <laughs> this game has some gruesome moments too. Noel receiving that Triforce piece with the dramatic core kicking in and starting to consume everything. This is red. This is art. Yes, <laughs> injected in my veins. Absolute cinema. I think this series is in good hands at Grezzo. And if we receive stuff like that in the next 3D game, buddy, 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 that's gonna be some sort of a spiritual experience. I'm ready. Okay, uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Consider joining our Discord or joining me in the streams. Or maybe even my Patreon for some neat extras. I would also like to thank Yash for the continued support. Thank you all once again for sticking by. Thank you so much and helping me out for to finally reach 5,000 subscribers. I really, really appreciate it. And I wish you all guys a really, really good one. Goodbye, folks. See you guys later.